Ever wonder where rainwater comes from? It's a question that has fascinated thinkers for millennia. And today, we have a clear-cut answer. Rainwater is actually the end result of a beautiful and complex process that begins with evaporation. Imagine the vast expanse of our oceans, rivers, and lakes. The water in these bodies is constantly in motion, warmed by the sun's rays. This heat causes the water to transform from a liquid into a gas, a process we know as evaporation. As this water vapor rises higher into the sky, it starts to cool down. This is where the second stage of our journey begins, condensation. The cooled water vapor transforms back into tiny droplets of liquid, clinging together around particles in the atmosphere. These tiny droplets form what we see as clouds. Now here's where things get really interesting. As more and more water vapor condenses into these droplets, they begin to grow. When they become too heavy to float in the air, they fall to the ground as precipitation. This can happen in various forms like rain, snow, or sleet. But let's focus on rain for now. So each drop of rain that hits your window, waters your plants, or creates that soothing sound on your roof, has made a long journey. It's traveled from the surface of a water body, all the way up to the atmosphere, and back down to Earth again. But what's even more fascinating is that this process is part of a much larger cycle, one that's vital for life on Earth. This is the water cycle, a continuous process where water evaporates, condenses in the atmosphere and falls back to the Earth, only to evaporate and start the cycle all over again. So, it's clear that rainwater starts off as pure, but does it stay that way? This question leads us to the next part of our exploration, the journey of a raindrop. Just what happens to it as it makes its way from the cloud to the ground, but that's a story for another scene. From the sky to the ground, a raindrop can pick up more than just speed. Imagine a single raindrop, born in the clouds and plunging towards the Earth. As it makes its descent, it is not just accelerating due to gravity, but it's also journeying through an invisible world of particles and microorganisms that dwell in the atmosphere. This raindrop, initially pure and clean, can collect a motley crew of microscopic hitchhikers on its journey. Dust particles, soot from industrial pollution, pollen grains, and even harmful microorganisms may latch onto the falling droplet. In this way, a single raindrop transforms from a capsule of pure water into a miniature ecosystem teeming with life and matter. As the raindrop hurtles towards the ground, it doesn't discriminate between the pure and the impure. It collects whatever crosses its path, including potentially harmful substances like heavy metals or chemical pollutants. These elements might be suspended in the air due to vehicle emissions or industrial activities, and the innocent raindrop becomes a vehicle transporting them from the atmosphere to the Earth. The raindrop also encounters bacteria, viruses, and other microscopic organisms that are lofted into the atmosphere by the wind. Some of these organisms are harmless, but others can cause diseases in both humans and animals. The raindrop, in its descent, can become a carrier of these disease-causing agents, which may pose a risk if the rainwater is consumed without treatment. Even the atmosphere itself can influence the quality of the raindrop. In areas with high air pollution, rainwater can become acidic due to the reaction of water with sulfur and nitrogen oxides, forming what we know as acid rain. This type of rainwater can be harmful to drink and can also damage buildings and vegetation. Therefore, while it starts pure, rainwater might not be safe to drink directly. So while rainwater's journey from the sky to the ground can be a fascinating one, it's also a journey that can transform pure water into a cocktail of various impurities. This is why, despite its seemingly pristine origin, rainwater may not be safe to drink without proper treatment. But fear not, there are ways to make rainwater safe to drink. With a little knowledge and a bit of effort, you can turn this natural resource into a source of hydration. Let's look at some of the methods you can use to make rainwater drinkable. Firstly, we have filtration. This is one of the most common methods used to purify water. It involves passing the water through a system that removes contaminants. There are many types of filters available on the market, from simple household filters to more advanced water treatment systems. These filters can remove a large portion of the pollutants and microorganisms present in the water, making it safer to drink. Next, we have boiling. This is perhaps the oldest method of water purification known to humankind. By bringing water to a boil for at least one minute, you can kill most types of disease-causing organisms. 
Remember though, while boiling can kill bacteria and viruses, it doesn't remove any chemical pollutants that may be present. Then there's chemical treatment. This involves adding disinfectants, such as chlorine or iodine, to the water. These chemicals kill bacteria and other microorganisms, helping to make the water safe to drink. However, they may alter the taste of the water, and some people may be sensitive to these chemicals. Of course, these methods can be used in combination. For example, you could filter the water first to remove large particles and then boil it to kill any remaining microorganisms. Now, let's talk about something called distillation. This is a process where you boil water and then collect the steam. When the steam cools and condenses, it turns back into water. Since contaminants don't evaporate along with the water, the water you collect through distillation is pure. This method can be a bit more complex and time-consuming, but it's incredibly effective. Finally, there's solar disinfection. This involves placing the water in clear plastic or glass containers and then exposing it to the sun for several hours. The sun's ultraviolet rays kill harmful microorganisms, making the water safer to drink. However, this method is only effective in areas with strong sunlight and clear skies. It's important to remember that no method is perfect. Some methods may be more effective than others in removing certain types of contaminants. Therefore, it's always a good idea to use a combination of methods to ensure your water is as safe as possible. With these methods, you can ensure your rainwater is safe to consume. So the next time you find yourself caught in a rain shower, remember that with a bit of effort, that rainwater can be more than just a source of life for plants. It can also be a source of hydration for you. Now that you know how to treat rainwater, let's discuss some tips for drinking it. Firstly, always use clean and hygienic containers when collecting rainwater. This is to prevent any contamination from dirt or bacteria that may be on the surface of the containers. Also, make sure the containers are covered to keep out insects and other potential sources of contamination. Next, treat or boil the rainwater as soon as possible after collection. This is because waterborne pathogens can multiply over time, especially in warm conditions. Boiling the water for at least one minute can kill most types of harmful microorganisms. Alternatively, you can use a water filter or add disinfectants like chlorine or iodine. Once treated, it's crucial to store the rainwater properly. Keep it in a closed container and protect it from direct sunlight. Sunlight can promote the growth of algae and other microorganisms, especially in clear containers. To maintain the quality of the water, consume it within a few days after treatment. Another important tip is to trust your senses. If the rainwater tastes or smells off, it's better not to drink it. The unusual taste or smell could be a sign of contamination. Remember, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Lastly, keep in mind that not everyone should drink rainwater, even if it's been treated. This includes young children, pregnant women, the elderly, and individuals with weakened immune systems. These groups are more susceptible to waterborne diseases and may be at a higher risk of getting sick from drinking rainwater. In conclusion, drinking rainwater can be a sustainable and eco-friendly way to stay hydrated. However, it's essential to collect, treat, and store the water properly to ensure it's safe for consumption. Remember, while rainwater can be a great source of hydration, it's important to ensure it's safe before consuming. Rainwater, a natural resource, a life giver, but not without its risks. As we've explored in this video, rainwater is born from the condensation of atmospheric water vapor, which rises from the world's oceans, lakes, and rivers. However, this pristine source can pick up impurities as it falls through the atmosphere, mingling with dust, dirt, and harmful microorganisms. But fear not, because we've also discussed how to make rainwater safe for consumption. Through methods such as filtration, boiling, or chemical treatment, we can effectively eliminate the majority of contaminants and make rainwater drinkable. Remember, however, to always use clean and hygienic containers for collection, treat or boil the water as soon as possible and store the treated water properly. So next time it rains, you'll know exactly what's in each drop and how to make it safe to drink. Stay hydrated, stay safe.